he's hearing of a cause, he will come straight. Oh, tell him of you. Pray you do. I'll know his pleasure. Maybe he will relent. Alas, he hath as but offended in a dream. All sects, all ages smack of this vice, and he is to die for it. Now, what's the matter, Provost? Is it your will Claudio shall die tomorrow? Did not I tell thee yet? Hast thou not order for it? Why dost thou ask again? Lest I might be too rash. Under your good correction, I have seen when after execution, judgment hath repented o'er his doom. Go to, let that be mine. Do you your office. Or give up your place, and you shall well be spared. I crave your honor's pardon. What shall be done, sir, with the groaning Juliet? She's very near her hour. Dispose of her to some more fitter place, and that would speak. Here is the sister of the man condemned, desires access to you. And happy a sister. Aye, my good lord, a very virtuous maiden, shortly to be of a sisterhood, if not already. Well, let her be admitted. See you, the fornicatress, be removed. Give her needful, but not lavish means. There shall be order for you. Save your honor. Stay a little while. You're welcome, what's your will? I am but a woeful suitor to your honor. Please but your honor hear me. Well, what's your suit? There is a vice that most I do abhor, and most desire should meet the blow of justice, for which I must not plead but that I am, for which I would not plead but that I am at war, for will and will not. Well, the matter. I have a brother as condemned to die. I do beseech you, let it be his fault and not my brother. Oh, heaven, give thee moving graces. Condemn the fault and not the actor of it. What? Every fault's condemned ere it be done. Mine were the very cipher of a function to find the fault whose fine stands in record and let go by the actor. Oh, just but severe law. I had a brother then, heaven keep your honor. Give it not over so. To him again, kneel down, entreat him, hang upon his gown. You should have need of a pen, you could not with more tame a tongue desire it. To him I say. Must he needs die? Maiden, no remedy. Yes, I do think you might pardon him, and neither heaven nor man give it the mercy. I will not do it. But can you if you would? Look, what I will not, that I cannot do. But might you do it and do the earth no wrong? If so, your heart would touch that remorse as mine is to him. He's sentenced. Tis too late. You're too cold. Too late? Why, no. I that you speak a word may call him back again. Well, believe this, no ceremony to great ones long, that the king's crown nor the deputed sword, the marshal's truncheon or the judge's robe, become them with one half so good a grace as mercy does. If you had been as he and he as you, you would have slipped like him, but he like you would not have been so stern. <laughs> Pray you be gone. <laughs> I went to heaven I had your potency and you were Isabel. Would it then be thus? Why, no, I would tell what tore to be a judge and what a prisoner. All right, touch him. There's the vein. Your brother is a forfeit of the law, and you but waste your words. Alas, alas, why all the souls that were were forfeit once, and he that by the advantage best have took found out the remedy. How would you be if he, which is the top of judgment, should but judge you as you are? Think on that, and mercy then shall breathe upon your lips like man new made. Be content, fair maid. It is the law, not I, condemn your brother. <coughs> <laughs> if you are my kinsman, brother, or my son, it should be thus with him. He must die tomorrow. Tomorrow? Well, that's sudden. Spare him, spare him, he is not prepared for death. Even for our kitchens we kill the fowl of season. So, shall we serve heaven with less respect than we do minister to our gross selves? Good, good, my lord, we thank you. Who is it that hath died for this offense? There's many have committed it. Aye, well said. The law hath not been dead, though it hath slept. Those many had not dared to do that evil if the first that did the edict infringed had answered for his deed. Now, Tisawick takes note of what is done and, like a prophet, looks in the glass that shows what future evils, either now or by remiss this new conceived, and so in progress to be hatched and born, are now to have no successive degrees, but here they live to end. Yet show some pity. <laughs> I show it most of all when I show justice, for then I pity those I do not know, which a dismissed offense would after gall, and do him right that answering one foul wrong lives not to act another. Be satisfied. Your brother dies tomorrow. 
Be content. So you must be the first that gives the sentence and he that suffers. Oh, it is excellent to have a giant's strength, but it is tyrannous to use it like a giant. That's well said. Could great men thunder as Jove himself does, Jove would never be quiet. For every pelting, petty officer who uses heaven for thunder, nothing but thunder. Merciful heaven, thou rather with thy sharp and sulfurous bolt, it's with the unwedgeable and gnarled oak than the soft myrtle. But man, proud man, just in a little brief authority, most ignorant of what he's most assured, his glassy essence like an angry ape, does such fantastic tricks before high heaven as would make the angels weep, who with our spleens would all themselves laugh mortal. Oh. <laughs> to him, to him, wench, he is coming, he will relent and perceive it! Oh, pray heaven she win him! We cannot weigh our brother with ourselves. Great men may jest with saints, tis wood in them, but the, in the less foul profanation. Thou art in the right, girl. More of that. We cannot. That which in the cal the, that which in the captain is but a cowlick word is in the soldier flat blasphemy. Art advised of that? More on it. Why do you put these sayings upon me? Because authority, though it air like others, has a kind of medicine in itself that skins the vice over the top. Go to your bosom and knock there and ask your heart what it doth what it doth know that is like my brother's fault. If it confess a natural guiltiness such as is his, let it not sound one thought upon your tongue against my brother's life. She speaks and says such sense that my sense breeds with it. Fare you well. Could my lord turn back? I will bethink me. Come again tomorrow. Hark how I'll bribe you. Turn to my lord turn back. How? Bribe me. Hi. With such gifts as heaven shall share with you. <laughs> you admire it all else. Not with fond sickles of the tested gold or stones whose raid are either rich or poor as fancy values them but with true prayers that should be up in heaven and enter there ere sunrise. Prayers from preserved souls, from tested maids whose minds are dedicated to nothing temporal. Come to me tomorrow. Go to, tis well. Away. Heaven keep your honor safe. Amen, for I am that way, going to temptation where prayers cross. At what hour tomorrow shall I attend your lordship? Any time for noon. Save your honor. From thee, even from thy virtue. What's this? What? What's this? Is this her fault or mine? The tempter or the tempted? Who sins most? <laughs> Not she, nor does she tempt. But it is I that, lying by the violet and the sun, do as the carrion does, and not the flower, corrupt with virtuous season. Can it be that modesty may more betray our sense than women's likeness? Having waste ground enough, do we desire to raise the sanctuary and pitch our evils there? Fie, 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 what dost thou? Or what art thou, Angela? Dost thou desire her foully for these things that make her good? Oh, let her brother live. Thieves for their robbery have authority when judges steal themselves. But do I love her? that I desire to hear her speak again and feast on her eyes. What is it I dream of? O oh, cunning enemy, that to catch a saint with saints does bait thy hook. Most dangerous is that temptation that doth goad us on to sin in loving virtue. Never could the strumpet with all her double vigor, art, and nature once stir my temper. This virtuous maid subdues me quite. Ever till now, when men were fond, I smiled and wondered how. 